This hospitable village is presently located in a dip in the olive-covered Sierra at the heart of a fertile agricultural area irrigated by an ever-flowing waterfall. The early years of the 20th century saw the arrival in Al Medania of Arthur Angels and Pierre Paris, two scholars of the Iberian culture and pioneers of archaeology in Spain. In the Roman province of Baetica, Al Medania was a large rural villa known as the Ring, El Redo in modern Spanish, dedicated to the cultivation of the river Caicena floodplain. In the first century BC, the historian Strabo noted that much wine and oil is exported from Turtitania, the oil not only abundant but also of an unsurpassable quality. The journey along the Roman Baetica route will take the traveller to Almedania via Montoro, known as Epora in Roman times. Travelling on today's roads, the two villages are 90 kilometers apart. In Roman times, however, the road was less direct and the distance between them was 86 miles. The journey from Epora to the Roman villa of Almedania therefore once took four days, whereas thanks to modern communications, it can now be made in approximately an hour and three quarters. The villa of Almedania, or El Redo, nestles in the Sabetica mountain range of Córdoba, just at the meeting point between the provinces of Córdoba, Granada and Jaén. Its origins date back to the beginning of the first century BC, when the Romans had already settled in the surrounding villages. Today, the remains of the villa are notable for the height of their walls and the large number of surviving mosaics, paintings and different types of paving. According to the poet Horace, it leaves its abundance and its plenty, and those buildings almost touching the towering clouds. It refuses to admire opulent Rome with its smoke, its riches and its noise. El Redo is an outstanding village for many reasons, but particularly due to the fact that its architecture corresponds to the classical Greco-Roman style and is a good example of the typical Roman villa. The village comprises two very distinct parts. The Paz Urbana is a residential area, to date the best documented part. It has been excavated completely and is open to the public. Here the visitor can admire a luxurious domus with its own heating system, private rooms, bedrooms and bathrooms arranged round the peristilo or central courtyard. A large part of the Paz Rustica, the agricultural area of El Redo, is still to be excavated. This area was used to produce agricultural products, above all olives, and contains the servants' quarters and the production facilities. The most fascinating period in the villa's history coincides with that of its greatest splendor from the late 3rd to the mid-5th centuries AD. Although some researchers have suggested that the villa may have been a shrine dedicated to the god of sleep or to the eastern god Attis, it is more likely that the sacred nature of the site was limited to the realm of domestic worship.
The villa's outstanding collection of sculptures includes Attis, Perseus and Andromeda, the little genie Dionysus, the hermaphrodite and Hypnos. The 43 centimeter tall bronze statue of the hermaphrodite shows the duality, the ambiguity of the human being, while also displaying its harmony with its own complex, contradictory condition. This duality extends to the villa itself. The motifs with which it is decorated are in constant opposition to each other, like for example sleep and wakefulness. The villa's most emblematic item is the 87 centimeter tall cast bronze figure of Hypnos or Somnus, the god of sleep. According to tradition, this personification of sleep was the son of Nyx, the night and the brother of Thanatos, death. His mission was to transport souls smoothly to the afterlife. He has wings on his temples to enable him to move. In his right hand he holds the drinking horn he uses to extend the night, and in his left he has the poppy with which he induces sleepiness. Hypnos also uses sleep to transmit divine messages to humans. The poet Ovid described God's dwelling place. Near the Cimmeri, a cavern lies deep in the hollow of a mountainside, the home and sanctuary of lazy sleep. Their silence dwells, only the lazy stream of forgetfulness. Neath the rock with whisper low, O'er pebbly shallows trickling lulls to sleep. Merced al cual, con su murmullo resbalando, invita a los sueños su onda con sus crepitantes guijarros. To a large extent, the villa seems to imitate this description of the house of Hypnos. This would also explain the discovery during excavation work of medical tools, a house in which illness is cured through sleep. Before the cavern's mouth, lush poppies grow and countless herbs from whose bland essences a drowsy infusion, dewy night distills and sprinkles sleep across the darkening world. No doors are there for fear a hinge should creak, no janitor before the entrance stands, but in the mist a couch is set, whereon the god, relaxed in languor, lies. The other rooms are accessed from the central courtyard, or peristilo. The most important room was the triclinium, or dining room, where most of the social life in the household took place. Each weekend, the village's gastronomy sessions offer visitors the chance to try some of the delicacies of Roman cuisine. The menu is prepared using the recipes recorded by Marcus Gavius Apicius in his work Dure Cocinaria, a compendium of 500 dishes and the oldest surviving cookery book. The gustatio were the starters or aperitifs taken before the dinner proper, in which the main course was called the caput thenai. The mensai secundai was the name for the dessert. 
Afterwards, there was a long after-dinner table, or comisatio, in which participants chatted, recited texts, and acted out theatrical scenes while enjoying a delicious Muslim or warm wine with honey. The historical museum in al Madaniyah also contains remains from periods much earlier than that of the Roman occupation, in what used to be an olive oil and wheat mill. Four rooms exhibit the most outstanding items from the village's past. Paris and Angels were describing the archaeological site with its important remains dating back to the Iberian and Tertidon civilizations. The Cerro de la Cruz towers above Almedania with its enormous rocks, its wild appearance tempered by its covering of olive trees. The long climb is nevertheless made enjoyable by the sweet scents, the variety of vantage points and the beauty of the panoramic views. The Cerro de la Cruz settlement is an Iberian culture settlement known since the end of the 19th century. It was at the end of the 19th century when excavations were carried out by Maravé and Alfaro. And at the beginning of the 20th century, two famous archaeologists at that time, Pierre Paris and Arthur Engels, unearthed a large part of the cemetery necropolis. It was since then when the Iberian culture began to be Pacific, as during the initial excavations it was mistaken as a Roman cemetery. Nowadays, this is the best preserved archaeological site in the Iberian Peninsula and is the only one from the lower Iberian period, that is, within the Iberian culture at the very time of coming into contact with the Roman culture in Andalusia that can be visited. Additionally, it is an archaeological site that has a very high level of ashes, which has been interpreted as having been produced by a great fire, since the houses were not rebuilt. There is no evidence of different stages of building, and it is entirely made up of just one construction stage. Neither is there any evidence of salvaging of personal effects, since if it had been a fire of lesser importance, the inhabitants would have returned in search of their personal belongings. From the material discovered at this same level of ashes, coins, ceramic, etc., which have been very carefully studied, this destruction has been dated at around the end of the second century BC, and therefore, with respect to the establishment of the Roman power in all this area, we do not know whether it was the Romans that destroyed the settlement, but we do know that this happened when Rome was consolidating their conquest. In 2006, we have excavated another sector to join the opening cut out by the University of Cordoba in years 85, 87 and 89. 
And we have found another street with houses opening onto that street. All these excavations with the restoration, with the consolidation of the walls and the reconstruction of various huts that will be carried out are part of a valuable project that will enable the site to become important enough to be visited. The arrival of the Moors signified another important period for Al-Medinia. The village's present name stems from the Arabic Al-Medinaya, meaning from the city. In the 9th century, the area was the scene of various uprisings against the central authority based in Cordoba. And during the Middle Ages, Al-Medinia was probably governed as part of Priego. In 1844, the demographic development brought about the constitution of a town hall. In the 19th century, Almedania also experienced the phenomenon of the disentailment, which was reflected in large-scale colonization and the breaking up of the local woodland. Apart from its historic heritage and the associated tourism opportunities, Almedania also possesses another attraction for visitors, its natural surroundings. Enjoy the spectacular landscape, which contains some of the highest peaks in the province, such as the Albayete Peak, with its altitude of 1,301 meters. The limestone content of the soil in the area has resulted in deep valleys hemmed in by terraces of woodland. Almedania lies on the river Caithena, the main tributary of the Guadajoz, the flow of which is interrupted by numerous waterfalls, such as the amazingly beautiful Salto del Caballo, or Horse Leap. The Echo Museo River project, which we have called the Caithena River Echo Museum, is a municipal project being carried out by the Almedania Town Hall, which is intended to be a local development project based on interrelated heritage in its widest sense. In short, archaeological heritage, ethnological heritage, environment heritage and human heritage. Insofar as museum location is concerned, the Municipal Historical Museum is the main nucleus with three rooms dedicated to the origin of Andalusian Mediterranean culture. One dedicated to oil, another to Roman culture, and finally another to Iberian culture. Regarding the other nuclei, we have an exhibition room with a permanent exhibition on the Via Augusta, the main communications route during Roman times. We also have another museum on the history of the country folk movement in the Civil War, as this was also a war front. It is something on which we have worked a great deal. We have also been setting up a nature room, dedicated to environmental issues, and we have also recovered and will set up, and it is about to be opened, a flour mill that will guide us through the relationship of the town and the river with the flour mills. In culinary terms, Almedania offers much more than its Roman food. Local recipes include all the flavor of the dishes traditional in the Sabetica mountains, with dishes like suckling goat in sauce, mojetas, sauces, and migas, fried breadcrumbs, white bean hot pot with spicy sausage and black pudding, and pimperete, a kind of salmorejo typical of Almedania. Desserts include tortillas de canuto, a sweet cake made with flour, milk and chocolate. The easiest way to reach Almedania from the provincial capital, Cordoba, is to follow the A45 to Lucena, 
and then take the A339 Cabra Alcalá L'Oreal Road. The journey will take you from the banks of the river Guadalquivir to the heart of Andalusia in the Sabetica Mountains. With its narrow streets lined by whitewashed houses, the luminous whiteness of the village contrasts with the darkness of the rocks towering above it. Almedania is frontier territory, a way stage which nevertheless invites visitors to stay. The area's people and villages are naturally hospitable and offer a visit full of emotion, a place for fantasy on the Roman Baetica route, which the visitor will find difficult to leave behind.